hate puppies. But Van Nut. Good podcast. I feel threatened. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, the only podcast dedicated to solving first world problems and hopefully helping you figure out what beer you should be drinking this weekend. Weekend. I can't believe we're talking about weekend. I'm still in the weekend. Yep. It's throwing me for a loop. This we're is a little odd. Sorts. This Let's address the elephant in the room. There is no stew today. We had two weeks in a row of stew. It was a dual stew. Yeah. I saw a stew this weekend, though. Oh, really? I went up to his uh, his brewery, caught a Bruce Springsteen cover band. Nice. That was last night, two nights ago. How was it? You know, it was actually good. It was good. They, they I mean, the band was better than I thought Bruce? they were going to be. <laughs> no, not better than Bruce, but like... I don't expect much when I yeah. see a cover band, but these dudes were putting it on. Nice. So a lot of old people there, and there's this lady. I'm not kidding you when I tell her she must have like lost her eyebrows in a horrific snowmobile accident or something. I don't know, <laughs> but she had she had lost her eyebrows, and so she drew them on. And I'm that's I'm, a thing. Yeah, but I'm not kidding when I say. She started out by the temple. Oh, wow. And then went up at a really high arc and then back down and joined like just just a slight gap between making a full unibrow. But it was definitely too. It was a distinct right angle, like up. Wow. Down. There was a peak. Oh, yeah. And she like came. She came around the corner. And Who would have? You think, like, if you're going to draw it on, it'd be better? Be perfect. Yeah. Because you get to choose exactly what you yeah. want. And she was like, she just got like a thick tip magic marker and just, whoo, whoo, too big. She was permanently shocked. And almost went to a unibrow of and all the almost, awful looks. Yeah. Like, you had to really stare at her awkwardly to yeah. determine that it was not drawn together. The worst part is, you know, she looked at herself and was thinking, yes. This will do. I look great. This yeah. is exactly the look I was going for. I mean, in her mind, I'm sure she was like, this is pronounced. But it was What's like... What's wrong, man? What is wrong with people? It was it was across the bar pronounced. I was like, golly! Wow. And I said something. And as soon as I said something, I was like, man, this gal over here. And then my wife was like, the shocked one? I was like, <laughs> okay, so you saw that too. She picked up on it. <laughs> Everyone picked up on it. It was, it was wild. But outside of that, cover band was great. Good nice. people watching. Good cover band. So yeah, I've had a I've had a lot of stew myself. Well But not today. Not today. He's probably recovering from a, a Father's Day hangover. We're recording on Monday after Father's Day. And I'm feeling Father's Day. Yeah. I was I've taken a couple naps this morning trying to catch up from my weekend. Do you guys go anywhere good? I know you went to uh New Jersey. We went to Jersey. We left Friday, uh, Thursday morning at five in the morning. And what should have been like a four and a half hour, 445 took better part of six. Nice. Six hours to get up there and uh, went up there for my younger son's diving, regional dive meet and uh, at Rutgers University, which was Oh, I bet that was cool. Yeah. Nice facility. And, uh... We did some dive stuff Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday we had an off day, so we we hopped in a car, had some mutual friends that lived up there, and we went up there. She, she drove us into the city, which I hadn't been to the I've, I've been to New York twice in my entire life. Oh, really? I'm not like a well-versed When was the know, last tourist. time you were there? Were you an adult, or were you like a kid? Yeah, uh, it was to conceive. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> it was to conceive my oldest son. So, well, that's not why I went, but that's what happened. No, I remember yeah, you yeah. said you said I'm put I'm planting the seed <laughs> in yeah, New York. Yeah, that's what happened. Because this kid will always have a little New York in. Him. I went up there 14 years ago on a whim with my wife and another couple, and they had. Uh, she worked for a company that had like apartments. I guess the company had apartments up there and okay she, so they hit us up they're like hey the, my company's got a couple apartments you know y'all want to come up to uh to new york and just have a long weekend and we'll do new york things we we're like yeah sure let's go because at Which that time i've for, been once everybody gets pregnant so yeah <laughs> so and we had i mean t- so we got a free place to stay for two nights i think in new york which is pretty, in the city yeah, yeah in like in lower manhattan <sighs> nice so it was awesome, but like 
it was mid February. Oh, and it was brutally cold. And we went up there with this other couple, and literally all we did was bar hop. Like, we just found one yeah. non windy, non cold bar to run into, drink a couple drinks, and then walk to the next one. That's right. We did, I think we did, we did Empire State Building. And there's like one picture. We were up there for less than five minutes. It was so brutal. Yes. Yeah, no, so brutal. That. We didn't get to go like see the memorial, not love memorial. We didn't do anything. Like it was literally just, just too cold, just bar hopping. So I was excited to go back up there, uh, you know, see some other kids stuff. and do some touristy stuff. Go to the nine 11 memorial. We asked them what they wanted to do. They didn't mention the Empire State Building, which was fine with me. They wanted to see Times Square, Central Park. So we did all that. And uh, weather was, I don't know how it was Saturday here, but it was literally perfection up there. Like that it was how it was here. Cloudy, somewhat cloudy. No humidity. no humidity. In the mid-70s, I didn't sweat all day, even though we walked like literally nine miles a day like it was i go i go to new york all the time and you you just did one that i haven't done you went into central park i've walked many times along the sidewalk just outside of central Park. yeah yeah looked at it i've never so much as stepped foot in it and i don't understand why like it seems like that would be a really cool place to check my older son is very uh anxious when it comes to cities he does not like it um, born and raised in the suburbs, and oh, really? He gets like yeah. a little like, oh yeah, like this is not for me. Like, yeah. is it the hustle and bustle? Just, I think it's the it's the hustle and bustle, and it's also just whenever you go to cities, you know, since he's been born in the past thirteen and a half years, like there's just shady characters, and you know, so when a homeless person approaches him asking for money, that that puts him on tilt. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, and he, you know. He he's not used to cigarette smoke, which is prevalent. Weed smoke, he now knows exactly what that is. Dude, New York reeks of weed. Oh yeah. Ever since they legalized, yep. it's amazing. I remember I walked off the plane. This is just a couple of weeks ago. When I walked off the plane, I walked as soon as I walked outside to get a car, the dude standing next to me was just smoking a joint. And I was yep. like, Oh yeah, that's what's up now. It's just <laughs> Yeah, I mean people drinking, you know. He, he he was shocked when we were in Baltimore last year to see an Orioles game. He was shocked that like people were sitting on the corner at eight in the morning drinking and smoking cigarettes. And I was like, "It's Baltimore." I was like, "People do that. Like that's not out of the realm of possibility." You know, his dad used to do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If he, I don't know. If he, he hadn't knew pieced that. that together. Yeah. Like, do you, have, did they see you as like this teetotaling? Like, like have, have they kind of forgotten about? I, I, that bit of your past? I think they have. I think they have. That's I think they've kind of put it off. You know, it's d- more of a distant past for them, which is kind of the point. I mean, we loaned a friend my our third vehicle last week, and I got a fifty dollar gift card to a bot to a beer place. And perfect for you. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And my younger son was like, "Doesn't he know you're NA?" Which I thought I'd never heard that term before, but that's what my younger son okay and a considers me now like, narcotics so, anonymous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we had we had a good time. The weather was perfect. Central Park was packed. They got to see the horses, and you know we we went to Times Square, and there was all, all a whole bunch of stuff going on there. And uh, we were in the city for about six full hours, but we got a lot done. And uh, we saw the nine eleven memorial, which was pretty amazing. I'd never gotten to see that. Um, yeah, you did. You sounds like you did. Yeah, we, right. we had a good, we had a good trip and then, and then had more diving yesterday and he did well, uh, did better in the second event than the first event and qualified for nationals out in California. Oh, good. I mean, congratulations and yeah. not, yeah. you know, <laughs> we didn't leave though. We didn't leave, uh, we didn't leave Jersey till five forty five yesterday. So it, luckily the, all the traffic Sunday traffic was basically gone. So it was a, Nice. Okay. It was more of a f- just under five hour trip instead of a six hour trip coming home. So that was nice. Yeah. It sounds like you did more than I did. I did the equivalent of your bar hopping. I mean, yeah. Basically got up yesterday and just went straight out to tubing. Was on time. Yeah. So I was exactly. actually uh, earlier today, I was listening to last week's episode and I was like, I can't wait to talk to Brendan about the tubing because I hadn't. I'd mocked Ooh. your setup so much, so I, I can't wait to hear how it went. 
My setup worked. All right. For the most part. For the mo- Hold on. Yeah. For yeah. the most part. For the Who most part. Who went with you? Because I know a couple friends that said they were going with you guys. Did y'all have a crew? Yeah, there were four families out there. Nice. Yeah. So that was that was good. And we had one little kid. Little kid. And that was cool. Nice. Uh, I, I liked that because really got to show like a new kid tubing. Yeah. And that was awesome. And and mom and dad did well with it. And yeah. She loved it. She had her little floaties on and kept getting out of the kayak and swimming with nice. us. And water level was so low. It was you know, safe. Dude, it was just you just walked yeah. some of it. You know, it was it was cool. So we just were a lot of people out? Very packed. Yeah, I would assume so with the yesterday. weather it was yesterday. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't seen it that packed all year. So that was that was cool. But yeah, we we partied and then when we got to the other end, you uh you were kinda correct. Uh-oh. And I ended up driving out of the tubing trip. Yes. I so got, you didn't even make it to pass round one. Well, and it wasn't her fault. She was like, I can drive. And I was like, I'm fine. Like, I just didn't get. You had talked about you were going to have 30 beers and you were going to get after it. I, I know. I don't know what happened. I like slow played it. And I was, it wasn't anytime I wanted a beer, I had a beer. Yeah. I just, when I got to the end of it, I think I, I think we were out there like four and a half hours. And I think I probably had like four beers. And I was like, that's all. I was like, damn it. I fucked up. Like, yeah, I, you did. I screwed this up, but it's hard. That's usually first thing in the morning. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. But that's usually an hour's worth. I know. I know. But I had had a uh, I had had a rough night the night prior. Oh. Or no, it wasn't it was Friday night that threw me for a loop. My wife and I went to went to some some restaurant and then my wife was like, "Well, there's a 30 minute wait and we had kid we had food for the kids." She was like, "I'm going to run home. Why don't you just post up and wait for the table?" So I went and sat at the bar and I ran into some gal I don't know, and another dude that I thought was like with her, uh-huh. but it turns out that he was just an aggressive dude who was like hitting on her and kept buying her shots, and so she was kind of like leaning over to me, like, "Why don't you talk to me? Save me, nice married yeah. person that's not going to try to you know keep buying yeah. the shots and bang me." Well, this kind of set dude off. Oh no, that that I was talking, so he was like, "No, nah, this I'm I'm not." stopping yeah never stop stopping never stop never stop. <laughs> and he just he just started ordering shots like and now now he's including me and i'm like i don't like tequila and he's like well you haven't tried this tequila and like, by the time my wife got back 30 minutes later when our table was if ready, you're trying to sell me on the taste of anything not to be a shot yeah no that's not the way no like that's the least way to taste anything yeah that's why you do it that way correct well i got out over my skis pretty quick yeah, because I don't like I don't do shots. We've discussed it. I'm yeah, not yeah. a shot guy. But dude kept putting them there, and then so by the time I got home, like I woke up the next day, I felt rough. So I think that that kind of compounded why I went slow because mm-hmm. I had gotten a little out there. But yeah, so I drove out of there only to have like my daughter's hair get like blowing around in the truck because we had the top off, and she got her hair all tangled up in a scrunchie, and like it turned into like a matted mess. Oh my god. So I had to pull over on the side of the road. I'm out there with the with my knife, like cutting scrunchy out of oh my her hair, gosh. like on the side of the road in the country. So it all kind of started, which sobers you up quick. Oh yeah. In addition to you know, yeah, crying yeah. child. Did y'all make it to our normal Father's Day? Uh, it did made it there, and then that's when things Pine really. Creek. That's when things really picked up because they have the strong beers for Father's Day. Do you have a crew out there? No, we didn't get there till like four thirty. So it was just the tube and crew it was kind of there, and then uh, and then our buddy Marshall showed up. Nice. So like as soon as one crew left, another crew rolled in. So I was like, all right, that's perfect. And then just came back and went to the Duke's house and drank all night. Nice. And then watched the Tour de France special over and over, which I just <laughs> stay up all night watching that. <laughs> that thing is the best. Yeah, that's on my to do list. I'm trying to finish up uh, Food Bar. I haven't watched that. People say that's really good. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it was a good Father's Day, but I'm paying for it a little bit, and then just went out and had beers with my pops today. Oh, nice. Yeah, so now here we are. I'm, How's I'm, he doing? He's still trying to deal with getting a, getting a house. and Still looking, still house hunting in the area? Navigating the situation. He looks a little uh, a little tired. I bet. You know? Because he, he's still on the fence as to whether or not he's buying or renting or even what he's doing, right? Oh, he wants to rent. Yeah. It's like it just makes more sense. 
We can get in tomorrow. Yeah. My mom has, my mom is very particular. Now's not the time to buy. No. But it's an awful housing market, market right now. Yeah, my mom's in that stage right now where she knows what she doesn't like. She's, Everything? She's not certain what she does like. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You ever get to that point? Like, yeah. You're just like looking at stuff, you're like, don't like that, don't like that. She's she's squarely in that point where she's not seeing the things but she But she likes. can't tell you what she likes. Not really. It's yeah. kind of in general, broad strokes, but not dialed in. It's 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 crazy. What can you do? What can you do? Um, well, happy Father's Day to everyone out there. Hopefully it was a good one. Hopefully, uh, oh, you know, I'll, I'll spoil the surprise because I was so excited last night. We get home at 11 o'clock last night and there's a couple of gifts like sitting on my table. We're like unloading the car and I'm like, well, I, I always tell my wife, never give me anything. We've talked about this. Like yeah. you don't need gifts. Yep. But there's gifts. And she told me a while ago, she was like, the younger son want, really wanted to get you something for Father's Day. And he came up with this all on his own, but you're probably going to hate it. Okay. And I'm like, th- going back to our previous conversation about like, you know, world's greatest dad shirt yep, or, you know, yep. something corny like that. And I'm like, look, if he thought of it, I'm going to love it. That's right. So I, get, I see these packages and I start, I'm like, well, first off, how'd they get here? And wife's like remember when i said i wanted to go in and lock up before we hit the road i was like yeah he he wanted he wanted the packages he he's been like planning this out for a long time he wanted him to be here when you got home i was like all right so he was all excited and i started opening them up and uh he we had had a conversation over the weekend at breakfast he he was asking about me and he's like Dad, you used to be a DJ, right? I was like, yeah, back in the yeah. day, I worked a couple DJing jobs and you know done this and done that. And he was like, he couldn't wait to tell me what the as I'm opening the present. Oh, I didn't. So he actually spilled the beans before you. Yeah, ever saw yeah. It. He's like, well, this has something to do with that. Well, I'm opening, you know, a fourteen by fourteen flat package, and I'm like, oh, this has got to be a record. Cause I don't have any records, but I mean, it, it's the shape of a record. <laughs> so, as, so, I op- okay. So you got a record first. I mean, I know. Uh, this is yeah. Going, yeah. Okay. So that's I opened funny. a, re- there were two packages, one big box and one flat, you know, uh, package. It was packaged in like a, you know, they ordered it on Amazon yeah. or something. So it was opened it up. It was Queens greatest hits, double record, double, double album. I'm like, holy cow. You got me you know a record player like i knew i knew i didn't get a just a record you sure hope not yeah so i opened the second one it was this portable suitcase style record player it looked like a crosley i I didn't even notice what brand it was it looked like one last night she she said it wasn't expensive um yeah it's the crosley it's got its own blue it's it's bluetooth it's got its own speakers you can uh so you can Bluetooth into other speakers, or you can have things Bluetooth into. I think it. you can Bluetooth into it. Okay, that's what okay. I haven't even looked at the directions, but it also has an input, it has an output where you can put, plug other speakers into it. Which nice. I, which because now I'm going to have to have a record room, right? I'm going to have to. There we go. Yeah, that's so, what I like to hear. Uh, I was quite surprised by it, uh, and she was like, "This was all his doing." She was like. The first record player he sent me was like $200 that he researched. Yes. And she was like, look, if we're going to do this, we can't do that. Like, yeah. So she did some research and they did. They, and then he wanted to buy me all these records. And Hell she was yeah. like, they're expensive. I was like, yeah, you know, they sure can be. Well, and she was like, I said, I thought you said I wouldn't like this. She goes, well, I listened to the podcast and you know, you were making fun of it. Yeah, You're busting everyone's balls. And buddy. I was like. Oh, I stand by everything I said, but it's cool. But it's a sweet gift, you know, yeah. for my for my eleven year old. Like that's really cool. Um, and she she talked him into like she was like, well, I think dad, you know, I think part of the fun for dad would be you know going to buy the records. So maybe you and him can go, you know, that is go the to fun. Plan Nine. So she was like, maybe that's something you two can get in together, and that's great because I get to spend so much time with my older son doing baseball. I don't spend as much yeah that's true doing the diving because she's at the diving and you know i don't really have a lot obviously when i can i'm at, I'm at both but it's kind of hard so no, maybe this will be our this will be our thing yeah, yeah it takes forever it's a huge it's look it's just like having a record yeah it's a huge pain in the ass yeah 
You got to scroll through every single thing. There's nothing easy about it. It takes yeah. all fucking day. And then finally you end up going... I guess I do want the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. It's the best thing here. You end it's up only buying it. Eight dollars, you know. Like. Yeah, you find the used stuff, and then you feel like you kind of have mm-hmm. to do it because you're like, oh, five bucks. Yeah, done. I've got some old albums that I'm like, do I need Jethro Tull? No, no. Do I have it for five bucks? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And clearly. And he likes he he. Both my boys actually like the music I like. I guess I've kind of like instilled it in them. They had a they had a like fifth grade in the school year graduation air quotes party yep. and the dj asked for like uh for you know song for a set list and he was like acdc you know yes. like he was journey like he was throwing out you know zeppelin That's good like stuff. yeah so he gets like good music he's not all about all the new all right, stuff so you guys are gonna go get back in black and yeah do it right yeah See, this will be fun i'm psyched you have a record player after all the shit you've talked i know all the sticking it to us hipsters and want to be hipsters. Now you've got one. And I yours is stand, a portable suitcase one that you could take with you to New York next time. I you, still I, stand by everything that I said. Yeah, but you're in. Well, I'm definitely going to have to buy some albums now. I can't have one album. No, you can't just be Queen. Yeah. <laughs> just Queen on repeat. Yeah. No. That'll get old real fast. Yeah. Even Queen wouldn't like that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, now I'm a now I'm a record player guy. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Welcome to the team. Yeah. You got any records you're looking to get rid of? <laughs> Dude, I got so many records. If you want a record to go home with, like you can go shopping in there. I've got tons. Need these old people to start dying off that I know that probably have a nah, they all got, collection. They all got shit. It's like it's the same shit. Yeah. Over and over. Every time I go through someone's like old record collection, I'm like, ugh. I can't, I can't just listen to Is the else. original stuff worth more than the new print stuff? If it's in good shape, it is. Yeah. But some of it, it all depends on the record. You know, yeah. There's like, like I have a Bruce Springsteen born in the USA that was actually, all the words in it are in Vietnamese. Oh, wow. And it's from Vietnam. Like, yeah. Which I thought was kind of ironic. It's a born in the USA. Yeah. It was printed in Vietnam. And everything's in Vietnamese. And I was well, like, you know, other countries love us a lot more than we love ourselves. These yeah. <laughs> no, and so it was like, but that one cost me double with the regular Born in the oh, USA. Wow. But I was like, it's rare. Yeah. It's kind of ironic. Yeah. So I was like, I'm picking it up. So I've got that. And you can read along. Nope. <laughs> Can't. <laughs> But I'm kind of learning, I guess, you know? It's like, I It'd be know. awful if you'd gotten it. It was like a knockoff Springsteen some Vietnamese fake. guy yeah. singing in, in Vietnamese. No, it's definitely Bruce, I think. <laughs> you know, you can't really tell much difference these days with uh, with Journey, and that's a little Filipino yeah. guy. Yeah. So may, maybe it is. No, but it is English. She's singing in, not Vietnamese. Oh, yes. Oh, no, that one. <laughs> That would have really sucked. It's all been translated. Yeah. Oh. No, I got the good stuff. I'm nice. digging it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm psyched to have you on, on board. And if you are going record shopping, if you ever down that way and I'm free, I'll join you because I got a handful of little like secret hidey hole record shops that I dig. Oh, really? Yeah. So I wouldn't even know where to start. Well, I know one place where to start. Yeah. You go to Plan 9. Plan 9. Yeah, and exactly. Then, you start finding them, but there's some little hole in the wall shops around the city that are. Yeah, amazing. some places sell records, but like it'll be like an antique shop, but they'll also have a record section or like. Oh, there's sell- a great antique shop around the corner from here that has awesome records. Nice. That's where I got that Bruce album. Nice. We'll have to. I'll have to show you some spots. They know what they have though, right? <sighs> yeah, it's an antique shop. It's like when you go to uh, play it again. You used to be able to like find some like sweet deals on used yeah. sports equipment that they had no idea now they're selling like used bats for three hundred dollars it's like oh you know this is a good bat like that's that's the this antique store these guys go out and they actually source yeah records so they're going to these other antique things and then they're cherry picking and then up and they're already having to pay someone else who knows what yeah, they yeah, have yeah. price so yeah it's not cheap but it's cool yeah it's all part of the hunt you're in now. Oh man, well, an average record is what thirty bucks. Yeah, twenty bucks to forty bucks. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, they weren't that much then. No, 
(laughs) But now they're cool. They got something like they put like real pictures on them and stuff. Like they're not just black. You get all kinds of crazy stuff. I got a sublime one that's literally you see the dog and you see Bradley and all over the whole album, all over the The whole whole piece of vinyl. Nice. It just looks like a picture. Nice. It plays. It's cool. And they do a lot of that stuff now. I noticed the Queen one had like uh, the records were in like protective sleeves, which they used to be, but it also had like prints of each song and like what album they were on. It had like liner notes again, which I, I always missed when yep. when we got rid of digital, when we got or we got to digital, and they kind of started getting away with it. in tapes and CDs were like you buy a CD and yeah. it wouldn't have like the insert in it. No, just now be like, you get all that shit again. Yeah, that's cool. Because that's what you didn't have anything to do with your life. You sat there and you read it like an asshole while you listen to music. With headphones. I loved it. I get it. Because I'd be was, like, oh, so and so wrote co wrote this song. But like, you had that's no crazy. You had no internet. You had no phone. You know, you didn't have any of these things. So you would sit there and read it over yeah. and over. You go take a dump, grab an album, sit there and read the liner notes on the toilet. I mean, I used to read shampoo bottles and shit all the time. I, mean, I remember when my wife and I, I don't even, I don't even know if we we're married yet. We started dating and I bought the. Um, Kid Rock CD, Rock and Roll Jesus. Okay, yeah. And that was the one that had All Summer Long on it. Yeah. And we were probably married. Amen and all yeah, that Yeah, yeah, which is a great album. It is. I know I knew a lot of Kid Rock catches a lot of shit, but that's a, he had a He's lot a of hell of songs. an artist. Oh, Don't yeah. Don't fool you. But I was like, I, as soon as I heard All Summer Long, I was like, that is, uh, that's Werewolves of London by- uh, Yes, Zevon, Warren Zevon. Yep. So like, it must have been pre Magic Internet Phone because we bought the album and I immediately went to the liner and it was like sample by and I was like, I told you, I knew what I was talking about. Like, yeah, I think the internet did exist then. The only reason I know that is because if you still go to my old MySpace page, uh, Amen is my song. Nice from that album. Yes. Well, I go there all the time, so I should know that. Yeah, I just remember that was the last, <laughs> like, that's when it ended for me. But I clearly had internet or I wouldn't have had a MySpace page. So it had to exist. Yeah, but like when internet came on your phone, like I was late to the game with that. That changed everything. Yeah. Which wasn't even that long ago in the grand scheme. No. It's pretty wild. Pretty wild. And our kids will never understand <clears throat> it. No, they've always had it. I mean, I remember my buddy Billy, like, showed me, like, on his phone, he could, like, watch like a TV yeah, it was a cable thing. And I was like, he was watching like a baseball game. I was like, what is going on? Yeah. We were tubing yesterday and one dude was watching golf. <laughs> I was like, this is crazy. I had, I had, I have two old iPods that I play music through when I am announcing at the swim meets and we got a new setup and I had to kind of re re-rig it all and yep. then like somebody came up and were like what are those i'm like it's not they're like why and all that music on your phone and i was like the the computer that this music on is long gone i can't it, these are so outdated i couldn't change anything on them anyway and and this yeah, is locked in time yeah and i could go like f- look at each song and download it to my phone or to my cloud or to however all that works but that's a nightmare in and of itself ass. too. I'm yeah, out. yeah, yeah. They'll never know the struggle. These nope. young kids, dude. When you hear about right this Gen Z trend called the the everything shower. I, I had heard about it, but I hadn't read up on it. This is the most ludicrous thing I've ever I've ever seen. But this is apparently a huge trend where these people will be like, "Hey, we're I'm doing an everything shower tonight, so like I'm busy," and it's like a, a four to six hour shower marathon where what you, are you doing for four to six hours in a shower like all kinds of stuff i guess it's like it's not only everything else that you're doing in the shower with like i'm washing my hair then like shaving legs and doing all that kind of stuff which takes time but it's like you no know, you're also just listening to music you're just kind of hanging out you're doing your own thing it's like it's a hangout for just like by yourself in the shower in the shower what the fuck is the point of this and where do you get all the hot water? I was going to say, like, my, I would run out of hot water, but a lot of these newer facilities have the constant, you know, the insta-hot. Yeah, yeah. The Renais and everything. But I do remember seeing 
an article about it and they were talking about doing the whole hair and shaving and conditioning and all that stuff. But all I could think of is like, I thought that's what women did in the shower every other day anyway. Like I didn't think it was anything different. So it, I was thoroughly confused that they were like, Oh, I'm knocking it all out in one fell swoop because I'm like four to six hours is ridiculous. I didn't know there was like reading. No, they're like they're like hanging out. They're like like listen to a podcast. I do that in the shower every day. Yeah, but then I get out exactly, and it follows me exactly. And I do other things, and it follows me. Like, what are they bringing? Like a computer in there or something? I don't know. I'm very confused by this, but this is apparently the. This is what they're doing. Kind of cost a fortune. That's what I. Because you ever spent a long time in the shower in the bathtub, like a really long time. I've probably done a half hour shower. Yeah. Your hands and your feet are like screaming, "Get out!" Yeah, this seems like it's just too much. I don't yeah. understand. But apparently, it's all the rage. And I was thinking about it, like it can't be all the rage because for starters, I don't even have the ability to do it. Yeah. Because I don't, my hot water won't last that long. Yeah. And that means there's a huge chunk of the world doesn't even have water. Yeah. <laughs> Much less, less hot, hot water. water. Yeah. That can run for six hours. Well, and all these renters, their landlord will be like, uh, no. Like, yeah, like, what are do you that. doing? Yeah. I just don't understand the everything shower. I just don't, I don't know that I, I see the appeal. I definitely it. don't see the appeal. But it's all the rage right now. On TikTok. I mean, I shave in the shower. It takes an extra minute and a half. I mean, like... Yeah. It's not... There, there's no need to be in there longer than 10 or 15 minutes. I couldn't even complete my shave last night because it was taking too long. I just left with a goatee. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I do have this little, like, yeah. peach fuzz goatee thing going on. Because I was like, this is taking forever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to get out. No thanks, no time. Yeah. yeah I, was, I had to get back to drinking. It's clearly a, you a, can do that in the shower, the whole shower beer thing, which I didn't do until five, ten years ago, which when I first found that out, I was like, what have I been doing wrong my entire life? I actually, that's part of why this whole thing ended short yesterday. I was like, I didn't even bring my beer in here. I took the beer <laughs> and then I put it in the bathroom and I got in the shower and I was like, it was Father's Day and I had the opportunity to have a shower beer, to have a nice shower beer. No one was going to say anything. And I screwed it up. So the shaving got cut short. Everything got, I was out. I had to get back to my beer. You were all grumpy. I a got grumpy better. Grumpy shower. Grumpy shower. Now I have a, a, a goatee. And I came down the stairs this morning. My wife, my wife called me Mugatu. Which <laughs> is <laughs> not a good Do you look. have the mustache? I can't tell the shade. Yeah. It's okay. There. So, I mean, that's it's not a bad look. No, it's the full goatee mustache yeah, yeah. connected to the goat. You know, real, real 90s. The Van Dyke. Yeah, real, real sexy stuff. Yeah. I had a goatee before I had a beard. Sometimes I like a goatee. Yeah. You grow going? it all week? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I might let it ride, you know? Wife hates it. Well, Just, of course. She doesn't I like used, your beard. She doesn't like any facial hair you have. No, even though I look far better with facial hair. It's, uh, Most of us do. It's highly unfortunate. That's why I see old guys growing it. Yeah, can't win. I think she doesn't like it because she's too turned on. Yeah, and that's probably she's it. She's afraid she's going to dehydrate herself. Yeah. And just <laughs> she won't be able to stop herself from jumping on you in front of the kids. Yeah, and that's just awkward. Yeah. You, know, you got to set an example. Then they got to go to therapy. Yeah. So this Van Dyke is uh you know, she's a little upset. She's a little little horned up. Yeah. I, don't I get it. So do I. <laughs> I took one look at myself this morning and said, "Good choice, buddy." Yeah, I like Real it. Real good choice. It's not not a good choice. <laughs> The thing is, like, it can be gone in a minute. So what even get... What, I don't have that minute. Why even get upset? <laughs> I don't, I'm not doing an everything shower. I don't even have the minute. <laughs> I'm out of hot water. I couldn't do it. I'm not Gen Z. I gave it my best. I'm worried about... Have you gotten to this point with your kids? Because your kids are my, about the same age as mine. Like, my boys take nighttime showers, but I'm worried that once we all get on the same, like shower schedule hot water is going to become an issue <laughs> in my house my one of my daughters is one of those long shower people mm-hmm. like she's not doing an everything shower she's just doing a fucking off yeah just hanging out yeah she just sits in there yep. forever and so if she if i hear her showering i race upstairs and get in <laughs> i really do i'll be like i'll be like wait who's in there and I'm, i run up and take my shower because i know 
I'm screwed yeah. for the next few hours. Yep. So I just shorten her everything shower. Nice. By stealing a few gallons. Hey, you got to survive. That's right. But it's yeah, you're, you there. are going to get, my, my kids are, are night showers for the most part. Yeah. So that helps. When did you stop doing that? I guess that's a work thing. When did I stop taking night or like Pete, when do I think people in general take showers at night for the longest time? Cause when you come out of bath time as a kid, that's typically yeah. at night, you know, you get your bath and then you start being told at the end of the day, Hey, you got to go take your shower. But then one day it flips. Yeah. Is that a work thing? So for me, I don't remember how old I was, but I definitely remember like, and to this day, like I need a shower to wake up. Like I'm just. I'm not good at just rolling out of bed and going like the shower helps me wake up. But for a while I had a blue collar job back in my early twenties where like I got home and I was filthy head to toe. So you'd shower. So my, and I went to work super early and again, I was in my twenties. So I was like staying up late and you know, a half an hour extra sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So I adapted to it. But when I, when I was doing the blue collar work and I was showering every night at five, six o'clock, there was like, why am I going to shower? I'm, I'm already clean. Why am I going to get up and take another shower? No, I'm with you. I, I will. I, I mean, I'll do that sometimes if I have a real early day, then I'll take a shower at night. And yeah. Save me some time. But that's it's rare. Oftentimes I just get up earlier. And, yeah. And do it. But it's weird. It changes. That always everybody showers at night. And then one day. I would assume it's a school thing for kids, especially for the females well, and the males. Once you start or whatever gender, should I? Let's be open into here. They once once the youth start b- noticing the other Ooh, youth and the youth. or want to get noticed by the other youth, they probably start hygiene comes into play more, right? Like okay, so that's what it is. Because you, you all be, know kids that are like preteens are like you're the smelly kid. Yeah, they're Ugh. not wearing deodorant. They're not. They don't care if they bathe every other day. Brushing teeth is a huge thing. It's like yeah. I don't brush. Believe me when I say I don't brush my teeth for everyone else. I brush it for my own, like, yeah. <laughs> I, want, I like the feeling of my mouth being clean. But some kids are like, they'll ne- you have to hold them down to brush your teeth. Yeah, they hate it. <clears throat> yeah. They hate it. And then you get like enough, it's torture. You get enough cavities, though, and you go, ah. Uh... I wouldn't even, to me, it's just like the morning funk. Like, how would you want to? That doesn't happen until much later in life. That you I guess. Time. Yeah, I think you. I think it ties directly to like once you want to have a mate. No, but that's he, it. my point is like even if I get up and I know I'm not going to see anybody that day, I still brush my teeth. Yeah, I'll, I've done that where like I'll like go downstairs <laughs> and have coffee and like forgot to brush my teeth, and mm-hmm. then I'm like, oh, that's nasty. Yeah, even though I no longer feel as much scum, it's like it's in my head. Yeah, that's nasty. And go up and knock that shit out. I'm with you. Yeah, you gotta, yeah it's I gotta guess, be done. I guess so. High school age is probably when. To, back to your question, is probably when you start taking the morning showers. But I know guys who are like, who still just shower at night. Oh, really? Yeah, they never shower in the morning. Interesting. So I know some people never grow out of it. It's like a, it's the last thing you do before you go to bed. I tell you what, when I do do it puts get, you to sleep. Well, I was gonna say when I get gross in the evening and I do have to take a night shower, it feels good climbing in the bed clean. Hell yeah, especially with clean sheets. Yeah, it's, it, it does. There is some value to it. Yeah. And I know a guy who can think of right now who, like, literally never showers in the morning. Like, we'll be partying at his house all night. And, like, he'll be, like, getting ready to go to bed. And, like, he'll be like, ah, oh, have a good night. You'll hear the shower cut on, like, even on the weekends and shit. Like, that's just when he Well, showers. that's probably, that seems a little difficult, too. Like, thinking back to my drinking days, like, do I want to take a blackout drunk shower? Yes. A lot of bad things can happen. <laughs> eh. No one ever died in a tub. <laughs> yeah, or a shower. Whitney. I mean, everybody's thinking, like, you're not going to drown in a shower. You're going to slip and bust your skull. You could. And bleed out. <laughs> yeah, that's why I stopped showering. It's just too dangerous. <laughs> just too dangerous. <laughs> Everything's all wet and slick in there. Yeah. There's soap. What are people even thinking? <laughs> it's crazy talk, man. It's- <laughs> no, well, nothing to Wasting do with Wasting water. Man. Yeah, I've got a I've got a gross of Axe body spray upstairs. And yeah, I just, you know, tss, tss, I'm good to go. <coughs> oh God, Axe, that's a whole nother thing. That's just good. Oh yeah, the best, dude. Did you get the uh, you got the deli today, huh? I did get the deli. I uh, I uh, 
figured I'd do a solid. You get most of them, so I figured I'd, I'd slide out and pick it up. I was excited. I knew you were at lunch with your pops, so I wanted to try to assist here. It, it bought me enough time to go have a burrito that's making me feel horribly uncomfortable. Nice. Where'd you go? Uh, Pepe's. Got myself. Uh, got myself. Which one? Chesterfield. The best. The best. We have the Sycamore Drippy India Pale Ale. It is 7%. Ooh, it's, it's in a yellow movie. can with a pink sycamore leaf, baby blue lettering, and it's got a popsicle that's dripping. That's a bright can. Very bright. Yeah, that is a bright, bright can right there. It looks like it's going to be sweet and... I mean, it's got ice cream on the front, like a popsicle. Oh, so, I got a... Uh, I'm pretty confident I hate this beer. It's out of Charlotte, North Carolina, um, it says drippy hops deliver notes of melty tropical creamsicle and juicy mango, fresh and hoppy aromas from first sip to last drip. That's what it says on the can. Didn't come in a box. What the hell? Okay. 7%. Yeah, it's an ass kicker. I have to say I like it saying creamsicle. I love a creamsicle. Yeah, it's there. Why is mango always the fruit that is thrown out there? I don't think you can get rid of it. <laughs> it's like, does it fall into every beer that's ever been created by a microbrew? I think sometimes you just make these IPAs and you're like, damn it, it tastes like mango. So it's just a byproduct and then they say they it's intentional? That's kind of what I'm thinking. That checks out because like, how many beers do you use mango? Say they had, you know, hints of mango. But that's why I'm wondering if it really is just a byproduct of the hop. Of the hop, yeah. Just like the citra hop, everyone's like, oh, it's orangey. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this beer. I had to t- I had to sit down. There's a lot going on here, and I think it almost it's kind of sickening in its own weird way. You'll have to. Uh, oh, it's that I haven't. It's sicky sweet. It's it, it's not, but it is. We'll see All if right. you pick Let up on s- that too. Stink is it's, okay. It's hoppy on the nose. It's you're not uh, confused as to uh, what kind of beer it is. It's a Hop forward beer. Yeah, I just wonder if maybe it's just that I've been drinking for, this is my sixth day in a row. That might have something to do with it. Because that being 7% is like... Science is still out. It's really, it's hitting me. Whereas like that Miller Lite did not. I was like, ooh, Miller Lite. And I'd had an IPA earlier and I was like, ooh, it's not, it's not for me. Whew. I might just not be in IPA <sighs> mode. That is something else. There's a lot going on. It's not bad. It's just not good. <laughs> it's um for as hoppy as the beer is in your mouth, it finishes really clean. Super clean. Yeah, like I don't have that. But when it's in your mouth, it is a full on hop fest. Yeah. And it has a weird consistency, kind of like a lactose. That's what's messing me up. That's what I was saying. It's almost like too, there's too much going on. It's like a sweetness in the consistency, which doesn't make sense because they're two different things. But it somehow is. It's very odd. I don't know about this one. It's, there's nothing. The, here's the worst part. There's nothing about it that's gross. No. Nothing. It's just not right. No. I, just, it, I, I know I'm not doing a very good job describing this because... That's how some some of these go, unfortunately. Like it's it's very. This is where having a third or fourth mic would be nice. It's very sweet, but it's not sugary, so that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but it's there. It's it's thick, but it's not. It's creamy, but it's not lactosey. Yeah, like how does that work? It's also very hoppy on the front, but not on the back. This whole thing's a contradiction. Because usually, the hops finish harder on the way out not softer and there is a cream ale there's somehow Mm -hmm. a creamsicle flavor going on actually i think the creamsicle flavor is the saving grace of this beer yes it's actually my favorite part i'm going to go three because of the creamsicle i can't go any higher though because there's just something odd but the creamsicle is nice mango Question mark? Not that I'm aware I, of. I, if I hadn't read it off the side of the can. No, if you just told me to try this and go, what is it? I'd go, uh, it's creamsicle hoppy. It's got a little tart too at the end. Mm-hmm. Like after the aftertaste is a little tarty. 
Um, I like you said, man. This this isn't a bad beer, but I also don't know how right it is. It's weird. It's better than two point five. It's better than average, but I can't go. I cannot go above three. That's just ludicrous. Yeah, it's like a, it's a it's an old Honda Elantra. Mm-hmm. It's like it's fine. <laughs> it's it actually does everything well, but it also doesn't do anything right. <laughs> it's not this drippy beer is not drippy. No, like it's not cool. It's not delicious. It's just meh. Yeah, I'll give it a three. I can't go higher than that. I I wouldn't recommend it. I can't go se. lower though because it's not doing anything wrong. No. So it's like I want to pan it. I also want to love it. I don't don't either. I don't. Yeah. It looked cool. That's what caught my eye. Oh, it's definitely cool. That's when I buy delis. That's what I have to go off my memory so bad. Like I have to lay eyes on the can and be like, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that one. And it tends to be the loud, obnoxious ones that are, grab my attention. It's an easy way to do it. Because a lot of the, you know, standard cans look alike. Yeah. And then the worst part is you get into like a brewery and you're like, shit, they all look similar. Mm-hmm. I know we've had a couple of these. Now, I know we've done a Voodoo Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> Now, which one was it? Oh, sorry. Arms arms just killed Arm. me today. Peptides. Lack thereof. Lack of peptides. When's your cream getting here? Today. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to go take an everything shower in it. <laughs> yeah, my arm. I bought one of these, like, shirts that, like, it's, a, it's like a compression shirt that's supposed to, like, uh-huh. like, relieve pain in your shoulders. So I was like, hell yeah, I'm buy this compression Brett shirt. Brett Favre approved. It does have copper in it. Nice. Yes. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll pick this thing up. And then I wore it last night and I slept in it. I think I, I think the stretch kind of hurt me. Yeah. A little too end. much. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not for eight hours straight. <clears throat> Maybe not. Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? I'll probably put it. It's, it also, it's the hardest thing in the world to get off. Oh, I can imagine. Like it's all like, it's all tight to you everywhere. Yeah. It's really quite. Does it hard. make you look good? It kind of makes your posture look good. Yeah. And it, it, it's almost like Spanx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it kind of slims you out a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. It makes you look good. Nice. But it's it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> well, I've been seeing all these posture shirts. Have you seen these where they have like like ribs in the back, almost like a corset? Oh, I haven't seen those, no. And it's like, it like keeps your posture mm-hmm. good. And I guess the they make undershirts, but they're like damn near like $100 an undershirt. Well, if I remember correctly, I broke my collarbone. <clears throat> When I was a kid, basically the brace they put me on was basically a, something that went over around my shoulders and, and just yucked my shoulders back and kept them in place while my yeah. collarbone healed. There's no like really fixing it, no per se. So yeah, that that makes sense. But that's I mean they make shirts for everything else now. Yeah, but I've been seeing these. Like I said, they're like a hundred bucks though, so I I can't commit. But they make undershirts you can put on like go to work, and it like puts your posture good and nice. i guess the point of it is over time when you're not wearing it that's just how your posture yeah yeah so it straightens you're you like training up. yourself because we're all staring down all the time facts we have horrible posture and now you're starting to see like the bulge in the back of people's necks yeah because their head's always down yep that's gonna be like like everyone who's coming up now who's always had a phone they're all gonna have bulges in the back mm-hmm. of their neck from staring down all the time and then that'll become just what we look like 200 years from now yeah Ever. Shit, maybe even before them. Yeah. So we need to like, well, fortunately, I don't think we have to. We don't have to that. do anything. Yeah. We'll be in the matrix before long. With all this UFO stuff that's coming or we're out. we're gone. AI. Like, yeah, this could already be. Could already be in a simulation. Have you been following all the alien stuff? I'm trying to get more into it now. I used to be more into it. And for some reason, now that it's officially out, like. I don't care as much. It's weird. Like, we have multiple crafts. Like, for a fact, we have multiple crafts and a body. Like, that's that's what we know. But I always knew there was something else. Of course. It's, that's, and that's, so I was, I was talking with young Jimmy about this the other day, and he was like, can you believe it? Like, we have, we have spaceships. We have the bodies. Like, we're not alone. And I'm like, that doesn't change anything for me. Yeah. Like, I've 100% known that. Yeah in my mind now you're just telling me like what i've always known like gravity is there yeah <laughs> water's wet 
Yeah. Like I, I feel like I've always known this stuff, but now I am starting to get into it a little more because it's like, wait, who's been hiding it? Who's yeah. profiting Why? from the tech? Yeah. Like that's the stuff. That's that, the interesting stuff. Because they say like, you know, microwave technology came out of nowhere a long time ago. Like all of a sudden it was like, boom, yeah. it was everywhere. And the rumor always was that we discovered microwave technology from an alien craft that we got a hold of. I hadn't heard that, but that kind of makes sense if you think about when did microwaves come in vogue in the 50s? Like all of a yeah. sudden, now we got a magic box that you can just put on your kitchen counter and yeah, don't heat you up think, everything. Don't you think that sounded like quite the leap? <laughs> Considering what else happened from, you know, 50s to the space race and then like... There was a lull there for quite a while, right? Yeah. We haven't changed oven technology since the beginning. Now we have air fryers. Fucking toasters have been the same for all of time. Yeah. And then all of a sudden- Heating like, coils. All of a sudden they're like, ah, well, we do have this like little nuclear device. <laughs> Just yeah. radiate shit. Makes it hot. And we're like, you have what? And they can go in every house? No problem? Yeah. Oh. And it's safe? Yeah, I just got this little reactor in my kitchen. That's kind of well, dope. Well, if you notice on the front of the microwave, it's got that little zigzaggy pattern in the glass. So that keeps you safe. It does. <laughs> it does. Yeah, microwaves always freak me out. You turn them on like your TV. He goes like go yeah. weird. You're like, huh? It's coincidence. Good thing it's right at my head height and I'm about a staring foot from at it because yeah. I'm impatient. I'm just <laughs> what's growing faster, the tumor or my boiling exactly. water? Exactly. But that technology, that's what they say, that it was discovered in alien craft. We reverse engineered it and thought, actually, this is super useful like in the home. And then we just came out with it. Like, really that makes it. sense. Because it wasn't like it's just believable, but it wasn't like one company owned it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't. Yeah, it, just, it wasn't uh, what patented. Like no, it only just was, GE could make microwaves. Yeah, it just was everywhere. Like, boom. Like the government said, hey, we're going to give you this. Yeah, shut up. Because this is good for us. Yeah. We're going to figure out what to do with the rest of it. But this, I think you guys could run with. So there you go. But now they, all this alien stuff seems seems crazy. And I, I am starting to wonder. Now I'm starting to dive into it a little more in the Reddit threads where I'm trying to understand. Like, So it's been under wraps all this time. Who's profiting? What are they doing with it? Is there like some shadowy part of the government or are we like in cahoots with the aliens at yeah. this point? Like how much more is there if this is what they're willing to let us know? Yeah. And then they didn't even kill the whistleblower. Yeah. Like we could have just offed this dude. We we're, we're good at that. And we just never did. We're like, nah, nah, you're cool. <laughs> like, why is that? Yeah. We, um, whistleblowers tend to accidentally suicide themselves. They are famous for killing themselves. Yeah. With someone else's gun. <laughs> it's just kind of how it works. In a totally secure prison. Oh, we're going that direction. No, I'm just saying it happens all the time. Like <laughs> That dude didn't blow any whistles. Yeah. He was about to. Yeah. He was about to. Half the damn world visiting. Do you remember when you saw The Matrix for the first time? And like, they? that's when I first like heard like the you're living in a simulation like theory. Yeah. And like deja vu was like glitches. That really like got my mind going. I was like, oh, wait, that kind of checks out. You know, that whole thing was based on an old anime movie called Ghost in the Shell. Oh, really? Yeah. Like the Matrix was was done a long time prior by like an animation. And then it turned into the Matrix. Well, I mean, so everything, everyone, everything was done by animation at one point because it was easier to. It's just funny. Is everyone thinks the Matrix is like this, like mind blowing. Like, I can't believe they thought of that. And like, they, they didn't. It's like yeah. Vanilla Ice is no, like, I came up with this beat. Dum, 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 dum. See, it's different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see? <laughs> it's different. Yeah. Hear the see? difference? Yeah. yeah. It's totally different. Yeah. No, that's the Matrix and Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of movies get redone and and or swipe the storyline of. I mean, that's no. Yeah, no, I'm not. And, and some do it better. Yeah, I'm not hating on it. Yeah. Just saying, I always, everyone talks about the Matrix, like there's this genius thing. And I'm like, it kind of. Oh, are you the guy that's like, oh, whatever. I saw the ghost in the show long before I saw the Matrix. Well, I did. Did you? Yes. Where would you have seen it and why? I went through this like really short. Like anime phase. Oh my gosh. Now the truth is being told. Well, because there was this movie called Ninja Scroll. You're a dork. 
No, I was actually really cool, and that was the no. problem. No, <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you <laughs> you go watch Ninja Scroll and tell me if it's not awesome. If it's anime, I'm not watching it. You go watch Ninja Scroll and tell me if it's not awesome. Now, <laughs> granted, when I first saw Ninja Scroll, you were 13. <laughs> I was in college. <laughs> okay, and, S- say no more. And my, I was I was in the right state of mind to watch Ninja yes. Scroll. That's for sure. And the first time I saw it, I was like, whoa. Like it blew my mind, but yeah. this is '90s anime, so it's 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 old. But that that put me down a little rabbit hole in college, where there was this one dude who had all the anime VHS and DVDs and stuff, and everyone. And you were while, starving for something to do. Every once in a while, I couldn't get off his couch. Yeah, and we'd just watch this anime <laughs> stuff, and he put on like Ghost in the Shell and like all these. I was like, yo. It's mind blowing stuff. (laughs) It truly was. So the movie opened your mind. That's what it was. Nothing else. (laughs) Clearly, expanded your mind. It was the movie. Yeah, yeah, no. I just apparently I have these really sensitive anime receptors. Just like the Grateful Dead are amazing musicians. (laughs) Oh my gosh, dude. I mean, what is it about that music? It's so good. Everything's tingling. (laughs) It's so amazing. (laughs) It's wild. So I need to use this needle to listen to music. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, it it was yeah, it was it was it was a little stage in my life. Yeah, it was quick. It was about one year tops. Yeah. Then that dude moved too far for me to get to. (laughs) His couch wasn't around the corner. Yeah, but when his apartment was literally the thing next door to my fraternity house. Yeah. Yeah. There were times where, uh, you know, I went over there and I didn't leave for hours. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> just, just sat on his couch and watched. I was, I was, I was transformed. Speaking of movies, did you see? Have you seen or watched any of the newest Thirty for Thirty with Bill Walton? No. It's a four part uh, doc about his life, and you know, Grateful Dead got me thinking about it. But uh, it's pretty good. I highly recommend it. Okay. I mean, Thirty for Thirty does pretty good. A lot of stuff. Well, I mean, he's probably had four different careers. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. That's why you could do it in three yeah. parts. You have a college career. Yep, they you have a pro career. You have a is it owner? Career no, or no. Coach? So he wasn't. He wasn't either. Well, they didn't talk about. It. I don't think he did either. But I didn't know this. So basically, he was on a UCL UCLA team that was basically undefeated for years, won multiple championships. Yep. Then he went to Portland, had a lot of health problems, but won a championship. Then retired, then came back out of retirement. I've forgotten about this. Played for the Celtics and won a championship with the Celtics. There you go. And then he was an announcer. And now now guy. he's an announcer guy. Yeah, so he's had four careers. Yeah. So that explains Pretty wild. That is wild. I'll have to check it out. Now and that of I'm course done with my Tour de France. He was big with, uh, big with uh, the dead, follows the dead around, like new Jerry Garcia. Has been, yeah. yeah. No, that's always been he was also shit. big in the protest game early on back in Portland and oh, yeah. California. He grew up in California and he was a big uh, hippie guy. Well, I'm currently dealing with uh, I'm, I'm I'm down a Creed rabbit hole. That's my sport. Oh right my now. gosh, Creed! I've never watched any of the the Creed movies. So, oh Creed! Oh, like Apollo Creed's kid. I was thinking in their band Creed. Oh that's gosh, awful. no, that's no, no, no. you were talking about. No, I'm not down that rabbit hole. I've already been down that rabbit hole. Oh, you you were a Creed guy for a while, huh? For a minute there, I oh, didn't realize man. I was a Scott Staff guy. Oh, no. <laughs> he was... I just thought they You've were admitted to anime and Creed. Like, you've lost a lot of street cred. I can tell you, this is actually the exact same moment in time, the anime yeah, and the Creed. that checks out. It's the exact same moment in time. Yeah. That probably wasn't a good year. No, You know, now no. that I'm Looking really thinking, back, Yeah. I'm glad I got off that dude's couch. Yeah, thank God he moved. He was putting me down the wrong path. I you would have been, yeah, you would have been in trouble. I was listening to Christian rock and, and watching anime. Creed, what was the other one? Nickelback. Creed and Nickelback. Yeah, but Nickelback held it together. That Scott Stapp dude, like, completely lost his mind. Like, literally went insane. Oh, he did? Oh, completely. Oh, like, wow. Like, he was living this double life where he was, like, he was all Christian and it was, it was, they were a Christian rock band. Yeah. But then he was also doing all the drugs and fucking all the women. And it didn't sit well with him. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause he was, he was very conflicted and it literally just like drove him completely bonkers. Insane. I'm sure. Yeah. He got to be hard to live that double life. It is. And he, he didn't do very well. I would, I would be willing to say that he was, he was in his own prison. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> 
He should have been dead on a Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I'm assuming these are Creed songs. These are <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, these are lyric. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about Creed in forever. I'm going to go watch some anime too. Tonight's nice. going to be dope. So you I haven't watched any of the Creed movies either. Oh, they're good. They're good. Yeah. Yeah. Is there three of them now? Yeah, and three just came out, and so that got me kind of... I had watched like half of the original Creed. I do like Michael B. Jordan. He's a good actor. He's fantastic. Yeah. And and the the storyline was good. And they basically just... Uh, well, I won't tell you anything. I don't want to... Sp- if you haven't seen it, I'll leave it alone. Go watch the first one. Yeah, we'll- I mean, he's... Rocky takes him under his wing because he's Apollo Creed's son, right? Kind of, yeah. but yes. Adonis Creed? That's right. Oh, I did get to see... Uh, Fast X. This oh, God. So now I'm all caught up on the Fast and Furious. You know, you have to buy it right now or go to the theater. Oh, really? So I bought it at home. Nice. Because I should own it. You know, I want to make sure that I have the whole collection. And I watched that and my, I was waiting for my, my wife has a thing for Jason Momoa. I think a lot of women have a thing for Jason Momoa. How can you not? I mean, look, I get it. I would choose to be that guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's got the look. Oh, yeah. If you were going to, if you woke up. And like, like there was some genie standing over you and he was like, you want to continue on or do you want to jump into that body? Well, I mean, but t- so the po- my point is most guys would say yes, but like there's guys like Vin Diesel. I'd be like, no, no, I'll, just, I'll be me. Yeah, no, like but, I'm cool. So my wife's got a thing for him. Like she loves Momoa. Can't get enough. Yeah. He, that dude You've seen him without his hair and his beard and everything, right? Like, not all that badass. No, <laughs> no. Like, it totally changes. He's all look. like trying to take plastics out of the ocean. Like, he's yeah. not this killer. You know, he's this like, he's this soft hippie. But she, she, every time he comes on the screen, she can't help but go, mm. like, she makes that guttural. Oh, my God. Like, that's how she, yeah. mm. always, every time. Yeah. And it's, Little frustrating, but I had to get I had to see, you know, the tenth Fast and Furious. So I was like Does she watch all his movies? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we own Aquaman, which is trash. Because I found one that he did called The Bad Batch, I think, on Netflix. Okay. And it's not a good movie, but he's in it. Oh, then mm. <laughs> mm. just guttural grunts. I and mean, yeah. she these grunts come from deep, yeah, deep within her soul. She watched Slumberland, that's a kid's movie that he's in. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no she's she's all in yeah so i was like i'm gonna have to deal with this but i'm gonna watch some i'm gonna watch fast x because i want to well you like all the fast movies you've seen them all right i, I own everyone oh my gosh no yeah I'm, this is not my episode i've seen one that literally one one time you need to watch them all no I and do you need not. to make sure that you don't. I've seen them Don't all. watch them in release order. Watch them in story chronological. So you got to flip Tokyo Drift. You can't watch it in order of release. I've <laughs> seen them all. By seeing one, I've seen them all. No, I saw part of one of a later one, three or four or five. I don't know where they were like dragging a safe down the street and bashing it off buildings, and then like they jumped from bridge to bridge into like car to car. It was like. Star Wars look more realistic. And so I was like, I'm you've, out. You've seen the one you need. <laughs> that scene where the safe dies yeah. is where Momoa's <laughs> character's dad dies. Oh, okay. And so Momoa is now coming back 10 years later to avenge. Oh, yeah. He's going to take out Toretto. Nice. Yes. He wants to take Toretto down for killing his so dad. So Momoa's the bad guy. Momoa's the bad guy. Mm. And mm. 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 so hot. So, so bad. So hot. <laughs> so this dude shows oh, up. Your wife makes this noise. We well, sometimes it's like tennis. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like mm, 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 mm. Is there an echo mm, in here? Mm, mm. <laughs> mm. Well, I didn't think I was going to get to that one, but I got there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I'm questioning myself, but yeah. mm. <laughs> you don't mind if I do. Yeah. I think I'm going to get a Samoan tattoo. <laughs> Grow my beard. Now, so so I knew what I was in for, right? Yeah. And this dude comes out, and as soon as he comes on the screen, it's like mm, slightly different. Oh. It wasn't it wasn't as guttural. It was yeah. just kind of like intrigued. This character manages to strip all sexiness out of Momoa. Oh no. It's brilliant. 
Now, it's it's actually horrible. Yeah, I was going to say, what is Momoa without his sexiness? So Momoa goes in there thinking that he's an actor, right? And he's trying to, (laughs) (laughs) so he's, and he's, he's trying to, to do this acting in a Fast and Furious movie. So, you know, I I will say this, his acting in in Slumberland was good. Well, in this, he decided to channel his best rendition of like Heath Ledger's Joker. Oh, like he's crazy guy, but he can't do it. Yeah. He can't even get close. And so he comes out and it comes across as like a really gay joker. Oh. Like legitimately kind of like a gay joker. So all the crazy, but a lot more feminine and like always wearing like like silk and like it doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't work. So like as a bad guy, you're like, wow. Yeah. I get that you're crazy, but like you are not even sexy. Like you've somehow yeah. managed to miss sexy and go it's hard kitchy. to do on that man he he did it yeah maybe actually then it's his greatest performance i guess that was the intent right because he kind of has become um one of those Type actors cast? where yeah where he's always playing the same guy like he's sexy aquaman i mean he's aquaman in every role he plays right yeah he definitely deviated he tried to do joker yeah. and ended up gay and Okay, and maybe it's actually his greatest acting role of all time. Yeah, then, if yeah. you look at it through that lens, but I didn't hear—I didn't have to hear a grunt. Oh wow! Two and a half hours, not a grunt. That's an unsexy moment. So she will not be watching that one again. Nah, he was like the Impossible Burger of burgers. But he wasn't like this in previous. He, this was in, the first Fast and Furious oh, he was I in. I thought he was in a previous one. No, no. Okay, and in this one, you know. All, all the all the go flashbacks to Paul Walker, all that kind of yeah. stuff, because they got to go back to that exact car race that you were talking about with the safe. So you get to see some Walker. It's it's a it's any, a great any movie. Uh, grunts there. Yeah, it's a different grunt. <laughs> it's a different grunt. She grunts differently. Yeah, for that you know because that's like an an early two thousands West Coast. Yeah, it's he's not, a pretty not boy. A Samo- yeah, it's a different grunt. It's like mm. different. She Momoa was, does like the manly. Yeah, like, mm, like yeah. It's, it's more guttural and with Walker. So, mm. mm-hmm. it's a high, more of a high pitch. Yeah, yeah, he's a boy. Band <laughs> it actually type. makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> if you if you if you've studied female grunts, if I gave you both those grunts and gave you which one matches, which up, picture? Yeah, yeah. you'd yeah. be like, you draw the straight line very quickly. You yeah. can get crossed up. Yeah, no, there was no grunts. It was it was a grunt free movie. It was very nice. Got to sit there and enjoy it. As far as ludicrous uh, car stunts, ludicrous was in the movie, right? Oh yeah, nice. Oh yeah, but as far as car stunts go, it's it's actually I think nine was more unrealistic. That's the one they ended up in space, right? Yeah, they flew a Pontiac Fiero into space and brought it back. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I think that was a little more unrealistic. But this one, definitely some craziness. Where like a a, a ten year old kid is able to jump from like. Space spinning cars and like jump across and like lands in the seat bow like perfection i was like oh of course that's how you'd land it seat yeah. belt on mm-hmm. no it, it's it's pretty pretty bad it was great <laughs> it was great i loved it i highly recommend i have no desire to see any of those movies yeah once a year we just watch everyone that is crazy everyone you can't do it in a day it's too no, hard hell no too much of a commitment that's a physical uh, feat right there. Yeah. You can't grunt that much. <laughs> you get you get exhausted. You can't even sit that much. That's the crazy part. Yeah, you got to do it over the course of about about two weeks. Yeah. But it's it's worth it. But yeah, so if I got to see so. that. And it was, uh, again, highly recommended if you're a fan of the Fast and Furious. Do not expect to tickle your bean to Momoa. It's untickleable. Ooh. That bad. That bad. <sighs> Even Produ- brought it up tubing yesterday because I was like, the directors mess that one up. Like, if you're not gonna how cast you not him lean in? as that guy, like, that's the point, man. Yeah, I don't know how you don't lean in. Like, every are you one gonna of have these Vin guys- Diesel in a movie without a tank top talking about family? Then what the hell are you doing? Oh, we were doing that. All I know, that but I'm saying like that's who he is now. You know, like, yeah, he's Toretto. Yeah, which it is a fi- it is official. When I get my credit card back, when I'm able to get my credit card back. I know the first thing I'm buying. I can't. I can't stop it anymore. I need it. The cooler. 
No. It's more important than the cooler. What? The cross Toretto wears in every oh, Fast and gosh. Furious that he takes off and he's like, you know I'll be back for you. And like gives it to whomever he's going to say. I haven't seen later. this. I got to look this up now. There's like a stylistic cross. He's he- got this cross he wears. And it's all the time. He hands it to somebody. And whoever that person is who has it, you know he's coming back for them. Because he never leaves his cross. I'm getting this cross. I'm done. I can't I can't hold out anymore. You would not be so dorky as to wear Dom Torres cross. Ironically, yes. Underneath the surface. <laughs> it's not ironic. It's so cool. <laughs> That's the great. You see it with like little hinges. I gotta look it up. I'm looking it up. Oh yeah, you can't miss it. The Dom Toretto cross, and it's got these little hinges. So like, Dude, you can get of, on Amazon for ten bucks. I know. I'm just not doing credit card. Yeah, but see, I like. I want the Etsy one. <laughs> oh, you want the real one? It looks like it's a little more heavy duty. You know, I'm not gonna save the world for some. There's a twenty five dollar version on uh, Amazon. That's okay. Yeah, I want it to be heavy. I want it to have some girth. That is hilarious. I'm going to get myself a little, like, bald cap. I think that's definitely what I'm going as Halloween for next year. And a tank top? Either that or he's got a lot of he's got a lot of outfits. Okay. But, like, the Dickies button-down shirt with the Toretto yeah. patch. That's kind of what I need. The cross. You could do that. Bald cap. Yeah. Well, I, no. Commit. Shave it? Yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed. Oh, I kind of, I'm going to be Dom Toretto. <laughs> Which is interesting because of all the characters, I've never heard my wife grunt at him ever once, and he's the one I'm leaning in on. Yeah, he doesn't. I don't. He doesn't exude that cool badass guy to me. I know that's what he plays, but family. I don't. I don't see it. Family. Yeah, he's all about family. That's all yeah, I get. I, I just get, get to say that all night yeah. on Halloween. <laughs> family. <laughs> Reach out to Ray. I'm sure he probably has a. An over-the-top cross and a ball cap and a shirt already locked up for you. I'll I'll, I'll check with Ray before I place the order. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that they don't have like some stuff in storage. Yeah, <laughs> from back when yeah. it was cool. That shit never sold. No, no. <laughs> but I do think I'm gonna. I think I gotta. I gotta own it. I gotta own the whole collection. Yeah, get that cross. We got a visitor out here now. Dude, cones of shames on dogs. Cones so of bad. shame. Yeah, that's not a good look. Nah, poor bastard. He's worn one. I've seen seen him in many a cone. He's an aggressive. He he rides his body hard. Like yeah, he, he does stuff to himself that requires cones of shame. About once a year, <laughs> he'll do something. You know, like go through a barbed wire fence. Yeah. Like, oh, you're gonna need a cone of shame. Yep. That's gonna heal. This one, he got pink eye and literally scratched his face until his third eyelid detached. Ugh, that sounds brutal. <laughs> yeah, and they said, they said, all right, we're going to put him in a cone, give it a week, you're going to give him these drops, and if it reattaches, we're good. If it stays unattached, we have to go to surgery. Oh. So. You just make him a pirate? Oh, I didn't even consider that, because in my mind, it was just either I'm going to put him down at the end of the week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not doing the eyelid surgery, but you're right. A pirate would be good. We'll take his yeah. leg. Oh, that'd be awesome. You take one leg. Yeah. Because he's already he already naturally took the eye. And the trick is you take the leg that scratches the eye. Two birds, one stone. I mean, obviously, right? Yeah. It's far less embarrassing than a cone of shame. Yeah. No, you take the other leg that could still Oh hit the good scratch eye. Scratch the good eye. Smart. Yeah. Smart. And then just let him just keep scratching at the, the dead at the, eye. Yeah. Just at the socket. Let it just weep. Yeah. Okay. I like well, it. Well, you get a cool patch. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, of course he's going to get a cool patch. You put a jewel in there? Why not? I mean, you, you go like jewel. a Dominic Toretto cross? Oh, jewel? We could have matching cross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, I'm in. This actually makes me want to get a couple extra chains for the dogs. Yes. And then, like, we'd all have they, them. They, you buy your $2 uh, yeah, Amazon Yeah, buy the cheap ones. ones yeah. Throw them on the dogs, yeah. and I'll have my $25. And you Etsy. can put tank tops on them. See, Troy, <laughs> we're solving problems here. You mock me, but you say these things. Come up with good ideas. And those things are going to happen. I'm That's an idea so- guy. Yeah, but, and I'm an action guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you you say it and you're like, That's stupid. And I'm like, Haha, he's joking. I'm going to get that shit. <laughs> 
Like that would look cool. I'm man. glad I could be here to help. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get. I saw Fast X, and now I'm I'm over the top. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, this weekend was spent just drinking, doing various things, but like I spent a lot of time watching TV. Really, kind I mean, of vegged out. Nothing wrong with that. Nah. As soon as we're done with this, I'm gonna just go start watching. Why do you buy these movies? I mean, don't you have to watch them like ten times to make it worth your while? Not in the Fast and Furious. You can get the whole thing for like forty dollars, where you get like the first nine movies. I've never bought a digital movie. It seems like such a waste of money because you don't own it. But you do, as long as you keep the ser- like. Yeah, I but if you it, change services, then you're humped. Yeah, yeah. But I figure I'll always have Amazon. Okay, so it's through Amazon. Through That's where I Amazon do it. Amazon Prime. Because that was the one that I'm like, I'm always going to have Amazon. Yeah. On some level. Yeah, because you recently changed TV providers. Yeah. Now so if I'm you had team. anything through DirecTV, it was gone. Man. Yeah. They don't give you any money back either, right? Now, you know, when I called DirecTV, <laughs> he was like, holy shit, man. He's like, you've been with us since before 2000. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. as soon as you guys got Sunday ticket... Like, I was with you. He's like, I've never seen anyone, like, who's had it this long. And he's like, you are officially, you know, you're in our highest class of, like, service. Like, I, I can do all these things for you to stay. Wow. And he literally was like, I will give you direct TV for, it was like $5 more than YouTube TV was going to cost me to keep the football package. And he was like, I'll give you the direct TV for that. And then during football season... We'll give you twenty dollars off of every bill, so it covers what you're paying for the package. So you'll have the package for free on us if you just stay with us. And I was like, nah. And he's like, I will literally give you HBO. Like I will just wow. give you all these things. And I was like, I already committed. <laughs> yeah. Like I already screwed. I wish I'd called him first. I yeah, might have. Yeah, yeah. I might have kept it because he was like, we'll just pay for your pay for your but stuff. But you gotta think like you can't be the only person that's in that boat right like that's the whole reason they did it no he said we're getting crushed because there was a day that was last last week that was the last day to get a hundred dollars off a sunday ticket and on that day he said this is all my phone's been doing is ringing all day because it's the last day of the special yeah so all the people who are finally gonna pull all pulled he's like but he probably saved it with that package if he offered other people that have been around 20 years for that they probably saved if they hadn't a yeah, but I, I, I did ask him, and he was like, nah, today's been kind of a bloodbath. Yeah. Was like, all of us are sitting here in the center just fielding calls and canceling, and it's all for the same reason. I mean, that's why they do it. I mean, it was... Look, I would have never signed up for a streaming TV. I'm not a cord cutter. I am now. Direct TV wouldn't have been around if it weren't for Sunday, <laughs> Sunday Ticket. And rural people, which is how it started, right? Rural yeah. people, and then as soon as Sunday ticket happened, everybody was like, "Nope, I'm in." Yeah, like that's that's it. I want I want a dish on my house. I want you to drill shit into my roof. So you say you're not a streaming person, but it, isn't that basically with Direct TV? I mean, you're beaming it down. I mean, it's not a cable per se. Like, yeah, but it's not running through the internet. Like, yeah. if the internet went out, I still had TV. Yeah. Now I'm completely reliant on internet, which makes me nervous. Direct TV's had worked itself out too, right? Like I don't, I feel like the past few years you didn't have the issues like back in the day where like if it was windy or you know <clears throat> they'd gotten better. Yeah, they managed to do more with less. Like it would go to like low def if it yeah. was like a really bad storm, you could still get it. It's over now, and they're gonna <laughs> they're going down. Yeah, no one's gonna have that service. That's for sure. Is he looking at over there? What do you got going on? Oh, I just got a text message. There's nothing important. You like having an Apple iWatch? I love it. Yeah? I I, I want to get a uh, new one. I was going to get a new one and give uh, this one to my son. We went, the wife and I went, and they uh, got batteries put in our iPhones because we had them a couple of years. And I was at, so I was at the Apple store, and I was talking to the guy about the iWatches, and the guy was like, what do you have? And I showed him. He just laughed in my face. Oh, I like that. That's always a good feeling. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I was like, I think it's a three, and they're on like the eight. He's like, don't even disconnect that thing from your phone because it might not even re- Like, reconnect. we don't support that at yeah, all. Yeah, they're, they're like, it's about done. 
Everyone I know has one of those, though. They all have a different reason for why they love it. Yeah. The one thing everybody loves is they don't miss text or calls anymore. Exactly. Because it vibrates on your arm. But then yes. everyone else has some other thing that they're like, oh, and I've got this. And, and everybody's is different. Well, the new ones do all this crazy stuff that you're like, do I even need this? Like, I don't know. But, you know, I got to get the new. I can't buy some old yeah. one if it's my first one. I just don't like the way the stupid square face looks. Oh, yeah. They're ugly. But you also realize everyone has them now. Like, yeah, but that's why I don't like it. Yeah, but I love the look of an analog watch. Me that's too. my favorite look. And the Android watches are circular and they will look like an analog yeah. watch. And I, I like that. I don't yeah. like that that's square. And I read something the other day that said Apple will never go yeah. away from it because the real estate part just doesn't their, work in circular. Yeah. And it's part of their look. Yeah, but they also, you know, they, they did it. It wasn't about form. It was about function. Yeah. That's what they, that's what they, they always been. Then they back into form. But now everyone looks like, you know, everyone has the stupid square watch. I think they're stupid looking. But I get it. Like they're. I think all digital watches are pretty stupid looking. Yeah, except I mean, for the Fossil. I don't like those. I don't like any of them. The Fossil watch did a good job of kind of bridging the gap, but it doesn't play well with the Apple. Yeah. I fucking hate Apple. Gosh. No, but you can get the Apple. There's three right now. There's the SE, the 8, and then like the 8 Max or some eight even better version. But you can get the SE with like without cellular for like two fifty nine. Two. Can you swim in that? They say you can. I never do. They say it's water resistant, but I, but I not waterproof. Think, but like it says, like to a hundred meters. Like, wow! So that's a, yeah. is water resistant as a dive watch. Yeah. N- not this one. The new ones. Yeah, but the new one I could go swimming in because yeah. that that'd be part of it for me. Yeah. Like, like if I'm tubing, right? My phone yeah. is in some dry bag somewhere. Yeah. I can't see it. It's nice I, because you don't have to check pull your phone out every time you get a text message i don't even have my phone on me like yeah. right now it's like that's a perfect example like i don't yeah. even know where my phone is i really don't oh i found it but like <laughs> while you're at work and stuff if your phone's in your pocket or if it's across the way like and you get something you just be like you're checking the time and you know what it was yeah that's kind of what i'm yeah i think i'm i think i'm going in that direction yeah heartbreaking i'll wait for wherever the new one is though just so i can have because I feel like every time I buy something, it comes... Like, I bought those Sonos speakers, and it wasn't a month before they released the whole new lineup. Yeah. Well, that's always with technology, right? That's like the guy that was selling me on them was like, well, the 8 is cool, and then there's, like, the upgraded 8 version that does, like, uh always-on feature. And I was like, well, you know, because the Apple turns itself off, right? And then they're like... It's like, well, what's the point of the always-on? He's like, well, it's just a flex. I'm like... That's right. I don't get it. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, did did you see this dorky shit go up in my? I just now saw it, but I didn't see him putting it up. But yeah, I see. I can see into your. Uh, so that just happened. Your screen port. Yeah, it just happened. They got home like ten, fifteen minutes ago. I guess it just happened. You got some like hippie beads hanging down in your door there. What the hell just happened? What's the point? To keep the birds out, maybe. It's definitely to keep the birds out. That makes sense, though. That's probably a good use for that. We had to keep. So the birds keep going into my screened in porch and they yeah. shit on everything. And, and they now, have babies. And you know, we've had multiple generations of babies. Yeah. This year we had three different nests as the babies that are now grown up and having came babies back. came back. And now those babies are going to come back. Yesterday I had to catch a bird with my hands. Oh, snap. Because this bird got in, couldn't even get out. And yeah. I had to go catch the son of a bitch. His heart was about to explode because mm-hmm. I'd been chasing him around so long. And finally he gave up and just sat on a ledge. Yeah. And he was like, oh. <gasps> Mouth all agape, yeah. dying. And I was like, come here. Picked him up, threw him out. But this last batch of babies, they all grew up and never left. Yeah. I had to physically catch eight birds and remove them. You think that those beads will help keep them out? That's what I'm hoping. Because I'm looks, already seeing gaps in them. But it looks horrible. I mean, nobody sees it, but y'all. Yeah. It's my house. <laughs> I got to see it every day. That's some hippie looking shit. We've got those beads. Like if you walk into like a... A hippie shop, or or if you yeah. go into the back where like the the porno is, like back psh. in the day, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yep. That's what my screen in porch looks like yeah. now. And I just turned around and looked out, and I'm like, Troy got to watch this whole thing and never mentioned. I didn't it. see it. I didn't see it going up. I saw the girls coming and going, but I didn't see him install it. Must have been pretty quick. That's some tacky looking stuff. I mean, if it works, okay. Is it any more tacky than 
having your door propped open all the time because of the dogs. Maybe it works and you take the door off. Oof. Or you know they make those, and I have one, they make those like magnet ones that you can push through and then they come back, the screen comes back together and it has magnets on it. It does? Yeah. And like it naturally just finds itself because of the yeah. magnets. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll try this hippie shit for a little bit, I guess. Yeah. I'm like ready to shut down and go figure out what yeah. the hell is going on in my house. We can do that. Now I'm very confused. We've <laughs> given them an hour and a half. We got an hour and a half. Yeah. Man. And these next few weeks are going to be tough. Like you're you're here next week, right? Uh, I am here the next uh, two weeks. Yes. And then you're gone for essentially a month. Yeah, taking a, taking three weeks off and the tour, am I gonna, touring the country. What am I going to do podcasting for a month? You better figure it out. Shut it down. This is going to be get Stu or Ray or somebody back. This is going to be like Bill Burr's podcast. <laughs> you and I can fill for a couple minutes, but. We both know how hard that is. We I did that best of when I had COVID. Yeah, and I did those the, like it was like a two minute intro. Yeah, and it took me about two hours. I believe it. It was really difficult. I'm sure. Like it's it's hard enough, just us, but it's like yeah. impossible with one. Dude, when you walk around the bar to get a beer, go out to pee, and I'm I know I got a myth to fill. I'm like, all right, I got to keep talking here, and how but am you I can do get, it. I can do it because you it's know not, that there's something on the other end where yeah. I'm going to go. And then she said, mm. "Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yep. exactly." So, all right, well, good. I got another couple of weeks, but this could be the end of it. Yep, could be. You go on vacation, like I just <laughs> if I can't get anyone in here, then I may just have to I may have to shutter it. Hey, you know. We've been eight years without missing a week of putting out something. So maybe we take it three weeks off and we pick back up. You mean a summer break? Yeah. A real summer break? Wouldn't that be nice? I might have to take the time off from work too then and really just focus on nothing. You can you can always just pick an episode from year two and throw it back out there. I'm going to be calling you. From whatever Radisson you're in <laughs> around the country. I'm just going to be calling you. I'll try to. Yeah, we'll get together. I'll make, I'll make some calls in. I so that'll, 30 that'll, that'll buy me, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah. But it's not going to. It's not going to fill an episode. It doesn't fix the glitch. No. I'll figure it out. I can do this. We got it. I can do we'll this. We'll figure it out. You know what it's going to take? What? I'm going to research real topics. Oh, that's going to be weird. It'll be a totally different podcast. <laughs> I'll be like the history of anime. I'll get back and you won't even need me anymore. You will have figured it out. Yeah, I'll just just be me in a Toretto necklace out here shaking. <laughs> Dude, I feel like it got hotter than hell out here in the past like 10 minutes. Out of nowhere. Yeah. I'm ready to like. Like it is humid. I feel sweat rolling I'm gonna off I'm going to kick these doors open. I'm going to drink seven more beers. You need it as hot as it is. Big plans, Troy. <laughs> Big plans. You can hear my, my energy level is like, yeah. I'm like ramping up. Yeah. That last beer got me. Feeling well, good. Don't drink any more of that drippy by Sycamore. No, I oh. won't. I won't. I'm going to drop these at the Duke's house. Well, there's three left, so. <laughs> Unfortunately. Just make sure whoever gets one can give us a uh, some feedback on it. You know what I'm going to drink? See how right or wrong we are. I'm going to drink a daddy juice. Daddy juice. That is the best. It's that pretty good. Phenomenal. And as hot as it just got. And the salt life. I just listened to that episode. So I went up to uh, I went up to my store. Yeah. And they're all sold out of Salt Life. Oh, no. Like, motherfucker. I went over to the Duke's house. He bought them all? He bought them all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any. I can't get my hands on them. But every time I go over there, he hands me a Salt Life now. And I'm like, yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. But yeah, he bought, up, he bought all of them. I went in there. I was like, damn it, man. No more Salt Life. He gets it. I know where they are. He's a listener. Yeah. He tried it and was like, nope, it's the shit. Yeah. You're absolutely right. That's awesome. So there we go. There we go. Well, I appreciate you making it out again, Troy. You have no idea because I'm really worried about in a month. We'll figure it out. We will. We will. Everybody out there, look, thank you all so much for tuning in. We certainly do appreciate the support. And speaking of support, you can do so a handful of ways. One of which, rate and review the podcast. Second of which. Cost nothing. Cost nothing. Second one, also costs nothing. We call it the Cincinnati Swap. It's when you grab somebody's phone and you sign them up for the podcast. It's real easy to do, and they will thank you in due time. And the third way, it does actually cost does you. cost you. You just head over to our Venmo, 
at Inside the Pout House. And then you just drop anything in donations of 20. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Figured I just put the gauntlet down. <laughs> not you, Flores. Not, not Flores. <laughs> You're cool. Not our West Coast <laughs> rep out there. Exactly. You can stay right where you are. You've yep. done enough. I appreciate you. And if you haven't had a chance to get some new sunglasses for the season, head on over to Nectar Sunglasses, drop Abacus in the coupon code, and they will hook you up with a sweet pair of sunglasses at 20% off. And if you need a mortgage, the market is cooling. It might be a good time to get back into it. Head over to Screen Door Mortgage. They'll go ahead and take care of you, assuming you are in Virginia, North Carolina, or Georgia. <laughs> There's the caveat. There it is. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be talking to you next week. Cheers. Cheers. That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think? <laughs>